it makes me feel good that, that uh, we as Native Americans do our part and, and do more than our part probably uh, in service to our country. He was determined that he was gonna be in the Navy and he, when he makes his mind up he's gonna do something, he's gonna do it. So it doesn't surprise me that he you know, was on a submarine and had no trouble with it. One of my favorite things is, is caring about this country because it has done so much for me in my lifetime. I was born and raised in Claremore, Oklahoma. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news bulletin. The Japanese have attacked Pearl Harbor, Hawaii by air. President Roosevelt has just announced. December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. I was a junior at the time in high school. I came home from a, a, a movie that afternoon, and my folks were listening to the radio to the report. I didn't know that Pearl Harbor was a Navy base in, in uh, Hawaii. That was on a Sunday, of course, and, and uh, on Monday, we that's all we talked about at the high school, Claremore High School. Are, are we going to get involved? By we, I mean the student body. We got involved. I talked to my my uncles, and uh, sometimes they slip out in the mud and everything, and I didn't want that if I could get away from it. And I figured in the Navy, I'd have a place to lay down and it'd be fairly clean. After I signed up and volunteered for submarines, then they assigned me to the Piranha when it came in off of a patrol. And uh, from then on, my, it was search and, and sink. Does that look like the same one as we saw on the bow fin? The conning tower. Looks different. There's two periscopes. Okay. You're gonna have to start telling me what all this stuff is now. This is the same class as the Piranha, which was a submarine that I was on during the World War II. We go in here or forward? Forward. forward. Look at that. <laughs> I think this is a forward battery room, they call it, but it's also the officer's quarters. And they had a small ward room, they called it in here, where they would meet and so on. This is the ladder that goes up to the conning tower. And uh, that's, that's where all the decisions are made when you're in battle stations. There's about seven people up there at that time. There's the helmsman, which I, was uh, that was my duty. And then you have the captains up there, the executive officers up there, the torpedo officers up there. Basically, we were trying to destroy the merchant ships that carried supplies for the Japanese army. Well, the, the Prana sunk 14 Japanese ships, about half of them while I was on there. I think we were pretty successful. This is the uh, battle flag of the USS Piranha, the submarine I was on during World War II. It was laying in a corner in the conning tower of the submarine when I was getting ready to get discharged. And I thought, I can make better use of that. And I just brought it home with me. And uh, a few years later, I had it framed and it's been on the wall everywhere we've lived since then. We happen to be in in uh, Pearl Harbor when the war was declared over in, in the Pacific. All the lights came on and lots of horns were honking and everybody was shouting, the war was over, the war was over, you know. And the real happy event is when you sail under the Golden Gate Bridge at San Francisco. When I came back, I was ready to get on with my life too, think about going to school. Carolyn was from Claremore. She was probably the best wife in the in the world. We met after I came back from the war. But I did go ahead and, and enroll at Northeastern right after I started school in, in November. Uh, Carolyn and I got married. And our daughter was born down there at Tahlequah. 
and uh, I played varsity basketball and tennis down there and, and uh, the basketball coach said you need to work with kids so I changed my major and, and uh, that's that's when my life started it's in 1949 was my first teaching job we moved to Spapa and spent 28 years in the school system there I always tried to make it a place that they wanted to be kids need respect too and and we just, I don't know, we, we had an atmosphere that kids wanted to come to school, and uh, they were good kids, and they've, so many of them have been so successful. This trip that the Cherokee Nation provided us was a three-day trip, and it was magnificent. And we saw all the sights. Vietnam War was especially Oh, it's quite a it's quite a big deal to me because uh, I had seven kids that got killed in Vietnam War over there for, that that uh, were my students at Spalp High School, and so it was kind of the first time when I went up on my Oklahoma Otter flight, I had to, I had to get back on the bus. I couldn't. The emotions got me. But this time, my daughter was along and and. Uh, I handled it well, and, and we even found one of the names of the young men that had been killed. But it was quite a, an emotional thing. Well, I, I, I try to speak every chance I get. But any time they ask me, I climb on the soapbox and tell them what a great country and what great veterans we have. This Veterans Day is one that we continue to honor pay tribute to those folks that served in our United States military. If you see a veteran, thank them for their service. It doesn't take anything, just thank them, because they paid a price to preserve our way of life, our liberty, and the right to pursue our happiness. I think it's just a responsibility that you have as a veteran to do what you can to, to let the young people know that, hey, they've got a responsibility too. And they might be called on one day to saddle up and, and go serve your country. <laughs>